Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. This might be, if you're super alert, the third time you've seen AMD memory on NCIX Tech Tips. The most recent time was actually a couple weeks ago, and we might have made a couple mistakes in that video, so we're taking another crack at it here. So if the first time you saw AMD memory showcased on NCIX Tech Tips was back in 2012, there are going to be some key differences this time around. Last time, it was clocked at 1333 megahertz, available in kits up to 8 gigs, it was called the Performance Series. Now, we have a whole lineup of different series, available in different capacities, at different speeds. So let's run through the series in front of me today. The Entertainment Series is the more value-optimized one. So right here in front of me, I have an 8-gig kit clocked at 1600 MHz with CL9 timings. Then we've got the Performance Series and the Gamer Series. I have two 16-gig kits here. This one clocked at 1866 CL9, and the Gamer Series one clocked at 2133 CL10. But let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about the benefits, I guess, of more memory and faster memory in general. So number one is that AMD provides their RAM disk software for you to check out. So there's a few benefits to that. So number one would be if you were to load games into it, for example, you could significantly reduce game load times, particularly in large open world games where moving from one area to another can cause objects and textures to pop in. So you can significantly reduce that. It can also help with things like uh, video editing. So if you were to throw your scratch disk onto a RAM disk, you could avoid wearing out your SSD and hard drive as quickly with all those frequent back and forth reads and writes as well as increase your speed. It can also provide similar benefits with respect to just better load times and better performance in general to a wide variety of other software. And AMD spent an extensive amount of time optimizing their RAM disk software. So one of the most important things about RAM disk software is having a robust backup and restore functionality built in. So normally in a RAM disk, startup takes of the system itself takes a really long time as the system loads data from the SSD or hard drive into the RAM disk. And then the same goes for shutdown where it has to flush all the data out of the RAM disk onto the more persistent storage. The reason for this is that RAM does not retain its data when it's not being actively powered on. So in this case, instead of just dumping at the beginning and end of your system's power cycle, it actually is able to update the image as you go and it runs in the background so that you're using the RAM disk and it's updating your image on the fly. So instead of waiting a really long time for this kind of thing, it can do it much more quickly. It just has to and go, okay, well, there's like a couple more changes here. Okay, let's go ahead and apply those. And then we're pretty much ready to rock. So you won't even notice it running in the background compared to the way it does with a more traditional, well, with a more traditional RAM disk. So we decided to put all of this to the test. We loaded 32 gigs of RAM into this system right here to evaluate not only the benefits of loading up your games onto a RAM disk, but also we tried out Entertainment Series versus Gamer Series RAM to find out how much of a difference that speed is going to make to FPS. So first let's talk loading times. On level 2, we waited until everything was finished loading up. We got about 30 seconds on our RAM disk, 36 seconds on an SSD, and 191 seconds on a hard drive. So now on to performance. It used to not really matter what RAM you put into your system, but with Battlefield 4, there are some benchmarks out there that are suggesting that faster RAM makes a significant difference. So with the Entertainment RAM, we got an average of about 27 frames per second, and with the gaming stuff in, we got an average of around 28 frames per second. Now, 1600 to 2133 might not be as dramatic as some of the other benchmarks out there where they're taking the very slowest RAM available and the very fastest RAM available, and then showing, I guess, a bit of a bigger difference, but it is a measurable difference, and that's something that we haven't seen in quite some time. So thank you for checking out this week's NCIX Tech Tips episode on AMD Radeon Memory. Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more videos like this from NCIX.com.